we had a student the first or second year, super handsome guy. And he moved to LA and we were like, don't, he had no- Wait, I never moved to LA. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Another super handsome guy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hello, my fellow actors. Welcome to the Acting Career Center, here to help you learn the skills you need to break into the film and television industry. My name is Kurt Yu. Hey, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to get more videos on acting, auditioning, and career advice every week. All right, I'm really excited about today's video because I recently interviewed four of my acting teachers here in Atlanta, the four founding partners of Drama Inc., Jason McDonald, Catherine Dyer, Scott Poitras, and Claire Bronson. Combined, they have over 100 years of industry experience and over 220 IMDB credits. I've taken classes from all four of them. I've learned a lot from all four of them and I think you're going to get a lot out of this conversation because they have lived and worked in Los Angeles, New York, and Atlanta so they can really speak to their experiences in all three markets. During the interview we talk about how they got to where they are, their experiences in acting in every city that they've been in, and how they started Drama Inc. For those of you that don't know, Drama Inc. is one of the premier acting schools here in Atlanta. And they recently launched Drama Inc. Online, which consists of four of their most popular workshops now as online courses available to anyone around the world. I've put the link to Drama Inc. Online down in the description below, so please click that link and check it out and enjoy my interview with the founders of Drama Inc. All right, Catherine, Claire, Scott, Jason, the four founding partners of Drama Inc. here in Atlanta. Thank you so much for joining me today. How's everybody doing? Good. Great. Hello. Thank you, doing great. Awesome. Um, so this is actually really exciting for me to have you guys on here and on uh, my YouTube channel because the, the whole reason I started the YouTube channel in the beginning was to you know, similar to what you guys did at Drama Inc. It was because I wanted to share with people and I want to help educate people and share any knowledge that I have about the industry with people watching. And uh, I thought, you know, what better way to share the information that I've learned than to have some of the people that have taught me some of that information that I've learned uh, on here. So it's really exciting to um, have you guys on here. Um, before we get started on the topic uh, for today, I was actually browsing your guys's website, um, and I saw on there that so the four of you have uh, a combined over two hundred and twenty IMDb credits, and also is this right? Two of those are mine, <laughs> <laughs> and also over a hundred years of uh, industry experience between the four of you. Combined, that, yeah. That's scary. That's yeah. a really scary thought. Well, 80 of those years is Jason, right? <laughs> Thank you, yes. Yeah. I about to say, I started doing this last Tuesday, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm only 22, so I don't know. Some of you started in the womb. You were, yeah, you were acting while your mother was pregnant. Yeah. Um, um, Catherine's the longest standing union member. She joined after it in 86. I joined after it in 88. And then we both joined, she joined SAG in 90. One or ninety two, and I joined in ninety three. Um, so yeah, we've been yeah uh, a long time. Way back when when the union hadn't merged yet, so all oh. these all the newer actors only know it as SAG after one union. Yeah, I was, I was. We had black and white headshots. Yeah, yeah. Now we share the union with Tom Brokaw and Kanye and <laughs> yeah, <Drillings. laughs> Um Awesome. Okay, so the topic for today is um, I wanted to talk about the different markets here in, in the United States, uh, New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta, the three kind of biggest markets here in the States now. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk, talk about this today was because a few weeks ago, I, I had put up a new video on YouTube called, um, Should You Move to Atlanta for Your Acting Career? And there were a bunch of comments on that video asking about comparing Atlanta to 
Los Angeles or comparing it to New York? And I couldn't really honestly answer that question because I haven't lived or worked in either of those other markets. But uh, the four of you were in a unique position in that you, you worked or lived in in those markets. And even though you uh, are currently in Atlanta right now, so I thought it would be great to have you guys on here to answer some of these questions. Um, so the first question is for all of you, can each of you uh, tell us about your journey and about you know what stops you've made along the way and what cities, and then what eventually uh, led you here to Atlanta? I think we should tell each other's stories. So Claire's <laughs> mother was working in a, a theater <laughs> company awesome. on The Music Man. Yes, and <laughs> yes. very true, yeah. Um, anyway. I, I uh, was born in England, uh, moved when I was very young, uh, grew up in upstate New York. Uh, Jason is very right. I grew up doing theater with my mom, um, community theater, and then went to school. We're all theater trained. Sorry, guys. I, I jumped the gun on that. Um, uh, we're all theater trained. And uh, when it wasn't until I moved down after college to Atlanta um, that I got into film, uh, got an agent. Um, my very first agent was Brenda Pauly, and then she merged with the People Store. And uh, back in the day, back then, it was um, industrials and commercials. I mean, that was the lion's share. It was like a, a really a big event when a movie came to town. And mm -hmm. most often, it wasn't really coming to town. It was like, a movie was being done in Shreveport and you had to drive back and forth to Shreveport to say one line to audition for a pre-read, no less. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I met this guy and um, this guy meaning Scott and uh, we got married and yeah, exactly right down there. In and the Millennium Falcon. My name right there, in the yeah. Falcon. Yeah. We moved out to LA for a few years and um, then we moved back with impeccable timing um right after the tax incentives got sweetened and in time to meet these two yahoos and um realize that we had a really good thing going and uh that's the beginning of drama inc okay and that's the interview thank you very much thanks for coming <laughs> are you signing off now claire i i am Sayonara. <laughs> Um, I am originally from New York, born in New York, and my father was transferred when we were kids. Oh, I got a dog right here, so to keep her from barking, I'm going to pet her. We were uh, transferred down here when we were kids, and then I went back to New York to go to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Um, I was there for many, many years. I was doing off-Broadway off theater, and uh, when I was at the Academy, it was strictly theater. It was not a TV film. There were no TV film divisions, so I kind of learned everything on my own falling flat on my face and embarrassing myself many times. Um, I went to LA, spent many years out there doing the, you know, waiting on tables thing and uh, some theater, some commercials. So I was, my resume was building and then went back to New York. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I went back and forth, it was crazy. More theater um, and I did a lot of commercial print work, which was great. At one point, I quit acting altogether because it was driving me insane because it was difficult. Mm -hmm. And I was, I worked at A&E Television. I started as uh, an assistant in, for biography and then worked my way up to supervising producer. So I was doing that during the day, but I was still doing some theater at night, but I was you know, nominated I was, for an Emmy in 2003. Hello, primetime Emmy nominee. Um, that is true. Um, but I was doing, I wasn't pursuing an agent, but I was still doing theater at night. So I'm producing by day and doing theater at night, which was great. It was exhausting and exhilarating all at the same time. Um, and then we decided that, you know, my father here in Atlanta, elderly, sickly, we decided that we would sort of, sort of give up. I don't know if give up is the right term. We're going to pause our careers. Pause. That's fair enough. Um, we do local commercials and do some print work and and have a, a career down here. Well, timing was on our side for the first time in my life. And it was exactly what Claire said when the incentives kicked in. And um, and I was started getting auditions for feature films. And I, I thought, what's, something's wrong here. What is a feature film? How, how am I getting an audition for a feature film? 
And then it just kept rolling. It kept, it kept mm -hmm. snowballing. You know, we had great agents here and it kept snowballing and we were in the right place at the right time. And here we are right now. Yeah, I, I will now, say that Atlanta has been the um, exponentially, hands down, the best uh, move that the four of us have ever made. Right. But also, our careers. What did they say? When, you know, success comes when preparation meets opportunity. And, right. and, and all four of us were prepared. We were trained. We had strong theater chops. Um, you know, acting is acting is acting, right? I mean, uh, we, we all had that ability and uh, drive and talent, whatever that is. Um, so that I think, you know, all four of us were able to, to make the transition into TV film pretty seamlessly. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I might be the one that had the most TV experience just because of soap operas um, in New York, but, uh, you know, all four of us transitioned very, very easily and, and successfully. My, I'm so proud of my three partners and you look at their resumes, their IMDb, uh, and, you know, I see Scott in a movie with Liam Neeson and I'm just like, my partners are fucking rock, you know, and Claire on The Outsider and, uh, it's it's amazing. I and I and, and I love Catherine somewhere. I Catherine works <laughs> um, but, no, but no, I mean it's four strong theater actors who were trained and prepared. And when the opportunities opportunities came, we all, you know, we stood out uh at the time. Right. Anyway, uh so I'm from London, Ontario, Canada, which is uh, south of Toronto. I was a theater rat, community theater, high school drama club president. Um and I chose not to go to college. I moved straight to New York at 18 and went to Circle in the Square Theater School. I was the second youngest student they ever, had ever accepted. Um, and did the two-year program, graduated, got an agent, um, started doing day player roles on One Life to Live and Another World and Guiding Light and As the World Turns and mm -hmm. All My Children. Um, and all the soap operas. All the so I did every single New York soap opera. Wow. Um, and uh, then met Catherine, and then we moved to LA for six years, and then we moved back to New York for 10 more years. Um, and I bartended and managed restaurants and got acting gigs and did plays and did commercials, had a pretty, pretty amazing uh, print career for a while. Um, I was, if you picked up a magazine in the 90s, you saw me somewhere. Um, uh, and that was great. It was because that was great money. Um, and then, like Kat said, we moved to Atlanta and the rest is history. Just um, kind of the first time in my life I've had amazing timing. <laughs> so. Other than meeting this lady. But, right. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. Let's hear about when you met Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I guess I'm the only one who really grew up um, here in Atlanta. Well, <laughs> I thought you were just going to stop there. I'm the only one who ever grew up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll convincing people of that. Um, so I grew up in Marietta, a suburb of Atlanta. Um, moved here from Charleston when I was five. Um, and I wanted to be an animator for Walt Disney um, growing up. So bad. That's all I wanted to do until I quit the football team in high school and I got bullied. And in the hallways, you would negotiate when certain classes got out, who to avoid. And I would find myself hiding in the, uh, inside the doors of the theater. Somehow I got talked into running a follow spot on South Pacific. So that I got talked into running tech and I'm, I'm in the light booth and they were having so much more fun doing that. Mm. And as I'm getting older, I, I don't know, my, t my, my proclivities changed and I, I decided that looks like a blast. Mm. Stick in the light booth. I'm going to, I'm going to see what it's like down there. Um, and then the theater bug bit me, but that's the common denominator with all four of us is, and you Kurt, I'm assuming as theater is training and trouncing the boards and just getting that in your blood and your DNA well before you're ever in front of a camera. Um, just storytellers at heart. Um, Went to UGA, studied film and theater uh, performance there. Came back to Atlanta in 98. Moved to LA for six months with $300. No headshots. Wow. Car full of everything I owned in my CRX. Not with me. This Not was with Claire. This is on my own. Claire. Yeah, before we'd ever met. She would have never let you do that. 
No. $300 no, and no head shots. Nobody would stop me. If it's in your bones, in your blood, no one can stop it. You have to do it. Right. Six months later, the car died. I sold the car for parts for a plane ticket to get back to Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, the story and, gets better, but we don't have time for all of it. Right. A lot of too. Um, found the theater community in Atlanta. Got more friends as I'm waiting tables. That's where I met Claire. She was doing Measure for Measure at a theater that is no longer there. Now that's where the condos where Brenda Polly lives stand yeah. where this theater wow. it was a fire hazard mm-hmm. called the art farm the place should have been just demolished for years it never was um yes i i think it was um his love of shakespeare that that is how i first grabbed it. I, not, not the not the knee-high leather boots or the the hot pants and Mo-ing. the covers that we did in that show yeah so yeah it was a fun fun version of measure for measure um so I pursued her forever. Uh, during that time, we're, fil- we're becoming part of the film community called The Dailies. It evolved into something called The Dailies Project. And this was 99, 2000. So this was for like-minded people to come together, tell stories, grab a camera, go shoot stuff. And we would come up with challenges. Like you can use three people. You can use this one location, whatever it is, just to tell a story. And then we would screen these films. And this was uh, as part of Push Push Theater. It's a big community of like-minded people who love doing this. And that was our film school. So when we're not in front of the camera, I'm holding boom. I'm going to pick up craft services. I'm going to clear a location. I'm going to clean my living room. So we're about to shoot there later, whatever it is. That's just how we learn. And that's how we learn to appreciate the communal aspect of filmmaking, like the most collaborative art form on earth and respect for every division. It's not, you know, there's a lot of egos in this business, but it's the best stories that get told when people are coming from it, from, um, wanting to tell a good story, you know, and sharing a mutual respect. Um, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. And then, oh, we moved to LA um, in 2007, we were there for a few years, came back in 2009 into what was this environment, which has exploded. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had zero co-stars while we lived in LA. Commercially, I was working off, off the charts. I had a great agent. I was non-union. This was during the writer strike. So union workers, I mean, unless they're working off the card, they couldn't work. I was, I was eligible, but I didn't have to join. So I could do everything. And my agent loved that at the time. Um, so that was great. And then coming back here to Atlanta in 2009, um, I mean, you, you see what it's become today is one of the film production capitals of the world, if not the, mm-hmm. uh, it's, un, it's unreal. Yeah, I mean, all of four of us, our success has come in this market, really. Sure. Um, you, you know, when we moved to Atlanta in 2006, Catherine had three acting IMDb credits. Three. Now she has 70. Mm-hmm. Um, that says a lot about mm-hmm. how things have blown up here. Um, you know, I don't remember how many I had, uh, but, you know, it's um, the same sort of thing. It's like just so much work for Scott and Claire and and all four of us have really climbed the ladder well as far as going from those small thankless co-stars to meteor co-star roles recurring co-stars and then some guest stars and you know Scott starred in a freaking feature film that you we you were with us in New York last year I was there at the premiere yeah. That was amazing. I, I trapped the devil um that was fantastic yeah. a year ago yeah and it got a theatrical release and um yep. You know, so proud of Scotty for that one. Um, you know, and it's and and I don't think you know who knows where your career is going to go, right? I mean, yep. we could have been successful in New York or L.A., but for the times we were there, we weren't really successful. Right. Um, so, you know, it's funny uh, when I when we left New York in two thousand six, I had been with an agency, uh, Don Buckwald and Associates, for nine years, and when I told them I was leaving to move to Atlanta, Catherine Ryan, who was one of the head agents there, was like what the hell are you going to Atlanta for? Like, it was, it was like Claire said, it was, uh, yeah. it was commercials and industrials and most of them were non-union. So we were ahead of the game. We were ahead of the curve. But yeah. not, not, not because we're brilliant, but we just happened to be ahead of the curve because we came down for family reasons, so. It just happened to work out that way. That's actually how, um, as, as people that have watched my channel know that I'm from Ohio, um, and I've told a lot of the people that I know back in Ohio that just imagine um, before the tax incentive passed, uh, Atlanta was basically what Cleveland is now. When I was working up in Cleveland, just a lot of industrials, a lot of commercials. So I tell them, imagine 
Atlanta is basically like that little small market that grew to what it is today. Um, and some of the agencies here that have been around for a long time, they used to be the people that only represented and only booked people on local commercials and, and industrials and stuff yeah. like that. And the agencies kind of had to grow with the industry and learn along the way like everybody else, right? Um, Atlanta had you know, a lot going for it though. I mean, first and foremost, the, the authors of the tax incentives, good friends of all four of us, mm -hmm. um, were very smart in the way that they wrote them. They're very transparent and money people like that. Uh, but also we are, we're a large population, you know, of the whole Southeast. We're really the only city that can uh, populate a, a film set in front of mm -hmm. and behind the camera, um, all from just our talent pool here. Uh, we've got such diverse um, settings. Uh, uh, you know, you've got major metropolis, you've got mountains, you've got swamp and, and ocean locations, uh, seaside locations. You've got, you know, you've got everything that you need. We've got a, the biggest, the busiest airport in the world to fly everybody in direct and save production money, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, it it really there was a lot of things that came together that made our situation the as as beneficial to all as as it has been for the last 12 years right and yeah and that actually that's great because that transitions really well into my next question so it makes me look like a good interviewer <laughs> <laughs> all by design yes so um so so in based on your experience because um, these are great stories how you you've all traveled to Los Angeles and New York and 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 now Atlanta. Um, what are some of the major differences that you you all have seen based on your experience um, between those three markets, especially as it pertains to actors who are just trying to break into the industry? Um, me, well, me, I, can I just quickly say that um, it, it should be noted. No, it should be noted that all four of us have representation in Los Angeles. Um, Oh yeah, um, and we do audition for that market, um, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that, that's what he wanted to note. Catherine, yeah. noted. <laughs> Thank you, noted. Um, the one major difference for me in this market is the sense of community, mm -hmm. um, and we say that at Drama Inc. It's community, not competition. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, you know, I want to book that role. You know, Claire and I audition for the same roles all the time. Yeah, I want to book it, but if anyone else is going to book it, and if I don't, then let it be Claire. You know, let it be a friend of mine. And everyone, everyone pretty much does feel that way, which is, you know, it 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 makes this industry, it makes this career a lot easier because mm -hmm. it's not an easy industry. It's not an easy career. It's so full of it's full of so much heartache. Um, and let's face it, uh, Catherine and I are, are confident women. We know who we are, and we know that if. If they want a Catherine Dyer, they're going to have a Catherine Dyer. If they want a Claire Bronson, they're going to have a Claire Bronson, you know. And and thankfully, I you know I think that goes to the um, stability and and the mental mental stability of, of of our community being not beating up on one another so much, right. you know, that we that we can support one another. It, it kind of um, it's a it's a cycle, you know. It feeds itself, you know. If we've got the community, then we don't feel the need to beat up on one another. Then we're all stronger in our work, and we support one another, and it, it just works all of us. And I think we hear it from um, you know Drama Inc. We have a lot of people who've moved here from Los Angeles, and some of them with decent credits. And we've heard it from all of them that yeah. they can't believe this the sense of community that we have at Drama Inc. and Atlanta doesn't exist in Los Angeles. It's just much more cutthroat. Um, and competitive. And having been in the New York market a long time, um, I never really found my tribe in New York. I mean, mm -hmm. Catherine and I were part of a small theater company, uh, <laughs> so we kind of had that for a while, but but not like what we've created with Drama Inc. and what we've created with other people in this community that just feels like we're all in this together. We're not against each other. So I love that. And we want this, we want the industry to stay. You know, Drama yeah. Inc., we came with, you know, we started Drama Inc. because because we wanted to work. Maybe it was selfish, but we wanted to help raise the bar for everyone in this community so the industry would stay. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, Los Angeles is great. I oh. love Los Angeles. <laughs> fan of Los Angeles. I would like to be in Los Angeles, but um. yeah, I know. And we and we are frequently. We have an apartment yeah. that four of us share out there and we spend, you know, a, a, a good part of the year all four of us out there. 
Um, um, Scott, tell him about Terry Knickerbocker. I'm saying Scott because you actually trained with him, but tell him what Terry said after he came down and worked with us. Terry was shocked at the kindness <laughs> that he experienced just with people in Atlanta in general. Everybody from his Uber driver to waiters to whoever. Um, and it was almost off-putting for him to experience that because it was so jarring and out of the norm for, for him. He, he, he said after years and years of training actors in LA and obviously in New York, he said, I've never seen people that come together quicker, a bunch of strangers that have never met one another that come together quicker in, in earnest to try and help one another than, than this market. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. he was really blown away by That's it. Cool. And Catherine, Catherine nailed it, the sense of community exists here. As far as the differences between this market and LA and New York, I've spent limited time in New York but LA for years and it's different to, it's hard to answer that now because of the evolution of self tape but at the time right. years ago just the volume of of possibility of 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 work that was even available to you mm -hmm. has has changed so drastically um i didn't have that in LA so if you if you're not on uh, LA casting directors radar you're you're not getting in the room Right. And they weren't taking tape. I mean, tape that that didn't exist. I mean, they, sometimes they would do pre-reads on tape. But even then, if they didn't know you, you're not going in for pre-read. Now, they're seeing thousands of actors for every freaking role that comes across every submission. And they're looking all over from Albuquerque to Baltimore, down to Miami. So it's a, it's a different world to answer that specific question as far as the difference with uh, at least uh, opportunity from Atlanta to LA and New York. By the way, we referenced Terry Knickerbocker. Um, he's a, for anyone who doesn't know, he's a Meisner teacher and coach and trains Sam Rockwell. You may have heard of a little known actor named mm -hmm. Sam Rockwell. Um, <clears throat> anyway, he, uh, his, his whole team, his studio reached out to us some time ago wanting to come down and work with uh, Drama Inc. and um, work in the Atlanta market. And we're, we're pretty stinking proud of that. So yeah, he came down and did his first intensive. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Kurt. I mean, I went up to New York three years ago, actually three years ago right now, to do an episode of Bull for CBS. And every actor that I talked to when I was just hanging out wanted to know about Atlanta and how to get into the Atlanta market. And yep. I mean, do I have to live there? And I mean, yep. the questions. And I was, we we're in Atlanta, but I was still going up and doing One Life to Live and all my children occasionally. And back then, everyone was like, well, you live where? What? Mm -hmm. Um, and so much has changed in, in just uh, in 12, 13 years. It's amazing. Um, but, you know, Catherine has worked in L.A. a couple of times in the past couple of years, uh, Scorpion and a Lifetime movie. And any differences you saw, Kat, as far as, I mean, were people interested in Atlanta on set? That, they didn't even ask where I was from. I think they just assumed that I was from L.A. You were an L.A. local hire. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, so it really wasn't an issue. Never came up. Mm -mm. Scott, you you encountered a lot of differences, like in the waiting room when you were when we were out there and and you were auditioning for commercials and stuff like that. Oh yeah, you get sharked. They'll shark mm. you in LA Absolutely. Uh, all the time. Yeah. Explain Blaine, explain I've, that. I've explain that what that means to get sharked in an audition room. So if I'm if I walk into a wait in the into the waiting room and it's um at a casting office and it's three p.m. whatever, I look around and see a bunch of my type. We're all there probably reading for the same role. They'll do it in shifts, typically, depending on the number of people or the campaign or whatever they're shooting. We're all dressed identically. I'm a white shirt, and blue jeans, whatever. Um, there, there are actors who will kind of come up and make small talk or give you some sort of side eye, try and get in your head, whatever it is, just to, just to throw you off your game before you go in and audition to help, in their minds, improve their odds of booking. Yeah. Yep. Just to shake up the talent, the other talent in the room. I experienced that I, both in LA and New York for wow. sure. Hated that. Yeah, I've I heard stories. It, but yeah, I've, I've heard stories. Of skin, but yeah, I hated watching it happen to other people. Yeah. What were you saying? I said I've I've heard stories of that happening uh, in in other markets, and I have friends that live in LA, and they've told me stories like that too, and. You know, when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, man, I've never experienced anything like that here in Atlanta, you know? I mean, I part think. of it happens because so much of it is self-tape here in Atlanta. Yeah, that's true. Back in the day when we were in yeah. the room, 
you know, there would be someone who wasn't as um, friendly as others, but, you know, I still don't even hold that against someone, you know, I mean, going in and, and being in your own zone before an audition, right. you know, you can't fault anybody for that. Um, right. No, no market is completely perfect, but I, you know, it's just, it's hands down. We really do just have um, a, a much friendlier, much more welcoming feel to our community, you know, and that, yeah. that permeates the, the whole career. I mean, I've definitely felt that too, uh, after, you know, been being down here for four years. Um, and you guys have really already touched on the next question, which was what, what you think makes, uh, Atlanta special. And it really is the community, right? That's the, that's probably the biggest thing, uh, down here. So, uh, my next question after that was, uh, since all five of us live in Atlanta, we were probably a little bit biased, uh, based on, uh, uh, where we are. So I, do you, is there a situation or can you imagine a, a, the type of actor or, or um, what uh, stage someone might be in their career or whatever that you might give advice of like really look at Los Angeles because that's probably the best option for you or really look at New York because that's the best option for you. Is, is there a, a situation where you would recommend uh, those two cities over Atlanta? I... I have told students that, you know, I'm not going to say to anyone, don't go to LA, don't go to New York. I, I mean, you you got to try it. You, right. you can try it. However, I, I suggest, and I think my partners will agree with me, that if you come to Atlanta first, you build up your resume, you get a mm -hmm. bunch of co-star credits on your resume, then go to LA or New York because you've got something to fall back on. You're not going out there as a newbie. And like mm -hmm. Scott said earlier, if you're not in the circle, you know, you're, you're, if casting directors don't know you, you're not going to get in. And there are thousands and thousands of agents out there, but that still doesn't mean you're going to get one. Yeah. It's still, it's difficult to get an agent in, in both of those right. markets. For sure. You definitely want to come to Atlanta first and into a right to work state to become eligible for the unions before you move to LA or New York, because you're not going to get onto a union set without being eligible. I mean, also, a quick follow up on what you just said. There are going to be people that hear that and say, oh, okay, I'm going to move to Atlanta for a year and get all get a bunch of credits and then go to L.A., right? Because that's all it takes. It's a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. It might take a little longer, yeah, than a year. Um, Six, seven, eight years ago, if you had the right type, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could build up a nice uh, chunk of uh, work in a year. But now, no. It takes right. a year to get for the casting directors to get to know you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can, you can get an agent here easier than you can in another market, although it's still getting a little more difficult. Right. But absolutely, Claire's right. It's gonna t it could take a year for you to get into the system for the agent to start sending you out and the casting directors to know your name and then they want, you know, they, they ask for you. That's at least a year. I mean, rarely, we do have a student um, who, it, it, he's special. He mm -hmm. immediately got an agent. He's got, you know, he's, he's new to the industry, but there's something special about him and he's talented. Mm -hmm. And he has started to work a little bit, just yeah. small parts. But he asked Jason actually recently, he said, now what about moving to LA? And I'm like, no. <laughs> he did his first co-star. Uh, um, and he's a super attractive, dynamic, uh, young African-American guy. He's in a yeah. great, he's in a good category. Um, you know, and he, he, he's someone that has the confidence to go to LA or New York. Mm -hmm. He needs to build his resume up here for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I was in Cleveland right now and I was 20 or 19 mm -hmm. and had some theater credits, I mean, yeah, the dream is LA, right? The dream is right. New York. If that's your heart, then go for it. It's yeah. gonna be hard. Those cities are expensive. It's yeah. tough to live there. It's tough to break in if you have no connections. It's tough to get an agent with coming in with your theater resume. Everyone should read uh, Jenna Fisher's Jenna book. Fisher. An, mm -hmm. an, actor, an actor's life and her journey from St. Louis and graduating from college and going, okay, gonna, I'll have, you know, be on a series in six months and, you know, um, did not happen that way. So, right. you know, I, I think there's, I always say about New York, it's a city for the very young and the very rich, although with the current situation that might change. Um, you know, if I was 19, 20, uh, 21, yeah, I, I would try a bigger market. Um, but the smart, the smarter move is going to be to come to Atlanta and um, to a market that's a little easier to crack. Mm -hmm. and, and that that's really the only 
uh, unless you have a stacked resume and um, you have burned through like the entire roster of everything that's shooting in Atlanta and you just are yearning to, to be in LA or New York, um, really the only other permissible uh, uh, category is really young because, um, it, because then, you know, they don't mind so much that you don't have as many credits, that kind of thing, as far as LA goes, for sure. They don't mind that you don't have as many credits. If you're young, and especially you can play teen, that, that really sweet spot, you know, um, and you don't need a guardian on set, um, you know, and, and you've been training and you have a good headshot, you know, and, and you've got a good ethic, work ethic, so that you're going to get into some classes out there and, and get to know people and jump into the pool. Um, that, that's, that's a different kind of energy, one that LA appreciates for sure. Um, but really on the whole, there's nobody that we're going to say, you really need to move to LA or New York. Yeah. You know, because like Jason said, for financial reasons, um, unless you've got that burning inside you and sometimes you just need to go and have the experience you need to, as a storyteller, sometimes you just need to go and collect stories. Right. Um, but this market is, is hands down the best market to break into film and television or to uh, beef up your resume for film and television. You know, so um, everybody's, everybody's, uh, uh, you know, you've got to take everybody on a, an individual basis, but um, there's really nobody that we've ever said, oh, get out of here, kid. You know, sure. and we have had, we had a student in the first or second year, super handsome guy, and he moved to LA, and we were like, don't, he had no. Wait, I never moved to LA, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Another super handsome guy. Oh, here. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a year later, he was still parking cars. He mm. was a valet parker. And it's like, well, that's what's going to happen if you move to L.A. without any game plan or without any kind of, um, you know, connection and without any serious credits. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's a super good looking, swarthy guy parking cars. Um, yeah. so. Handful have moved and already come back in the past. Yeah. yeah. They might have been gone for a year or two, maybe three, but they're already back in Atlanta. That's really yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, we've seen that's a, common. a lot of that. I, I mean, that's common in every city, right? I know, I know people from Cleveland that, that same things happen, you know, go out there. You just don't expect, everybody tells you how much, how expensive it is, and you don't know until you get there and you feel it for yourself. It's crazy right? how expensive it is now. Yeah. It's so much more expensive than it was in 2009. I was just out there visiting for a few weeks and, and I could, I could see that the bank account just like dropping down from just the amount of money I was spending mm -hmm. just visiting. Um, it's over $4 a gallon, I think currently right. there. and you have to have a car and you have to be able to get all over. It's so sprawling. Yeah. yeah. You just have to be able to get around. Um, you um, know, there's, there's also, there's a bit of a fallacy right now too, that, um, actors can straddle markets. Um, I mean, the four, like I said, the four of us have rep in LA. We can also be local hires there because we have an apartment. Um, but the, we get a lot of newer actors saying, well, can I have an agent in New York and LA and Chicago and Atlanta? And I was like, You're, you may find an agent that'll, that'll work with you in Chicago or Omaha or Denver or Dallas. Um, mm -hmm. But then you're, you, know, you have to be willing to get on a plane in the heartbeat. Um, right. And I was in LA in January with taking some agent meetings um, and I had six or seven and five of them said, you need to live here full time. Hmm. That, that was the answer. No matter, even though I have a good resume in Atlanta, um, they were like, no, you, we, we can't do, you, do it remotely. And then I ended up going with the one that was like, yeah, hell, I don't care where you are. So they do yeah. exist. I um, mean, that's and that's starting to happen here in Atlanta, too, right? Because uh, Atlanta agents used to get a lot of people uh, um, submitting from out of market. I mean, they still are, but oh, they're, not, uh, they're not taking them on anymore. Right. AMT is not taking on anyone that's not here. Yeah. Same thing with Houghton. They, they, they recently said that they're not accepting it. They're for at least the next year. They're not going to even look at a, a resume from from out of market. So it seems like most of the especially the bigger agencies are starting to do that here. Um, all right. Yeah, this is this has all been great uh, uh, discussion about the, the market. So let's let's pivot to uh, Drama Inc. You've already uh, kind of 
talked about how you all arrived in Atlanta and um, can, can we now talk about how uh, the idea of Drama Inc. first came about and uh, how, it, how it got started and then um, how much has it grown since, since the first day that you opened your doors? Because I know that is, that is a, a, a great story. Wow, where to even start? Um, well, we I met Claire. Claire. I, I met Claire. Um, she and I uh, were both, we were both with Houghton Talent at the same time. Mm -hmm. And we had callbacks for a commercial in South Carolina, something. Before that, before that, we did demo reel work for you. You did? Yeah, <laughs> that's how we knew you. That's how we knew you. We didn't, we didn't know you real well, but yeah, we did demo reel work for you. And then we got so how, we, how we really got to know each other was yeah. uh, Misty at Houghton said, there's another actor who's driving for the callback. We had mm. call, callback for different roles and we had to drive and spend the night. And I thought, mm. oh, no, I don't want to drive with someone I know and spend the night with someone I don't know. That's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird. Well, <laughs> neither of us booked it. Um, however, we, we, uh, we had a pajama party. And um, so, so a relationship was formed. Mm. And then, then the husbands were brought in. And we, that's my dryer. Could, could you hear the sound? Could you hear the little sound? Oh my God. It does play little sound. Um, so then we, we had what we call the Porch Winos Club. And we would gather on either our screened in porch or theirs and have a couple of glasses of wine and just talk about the industry. And Jason had the idea for Drama Inc. And, you know, we thought- What year was this? Well, we started talking in 2013. 2012. We opened in 2013. We, but with 2012, we started discussing and, but I had had the business plan and the logo since I think 2009 or 10. Um, and Scott and I had started when we moved back in 2009, we had started doing demo reels for actors and then shortly thereafter taping actors. And we had started out of our home and we had started talking probably for like the last um year or so been peru uh, been mulling around the idea of uh teaching doing workshops and stuff like that like one-offs kind of things um teaching actors how to uh sharpen these skills for themselves you know um self-taping it was it right. was on the horizon even back then and we, so we came together um, with this phenomenal idea and on paper and uh, we, we were looking at spaces, brick and mortar spaces. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think my three partners were a little more reluctant and I was like, no, we need a brick and mortar space. I yeah, know my wife. I, I was thinking one little room, we'll get one little classroom and we'll each take a class. Well, we, did. we were, we were going to rent a space. From, from We were going to rent for the first workshop. Um, mm. and. I had um, owned a restaurant in Cabbage Town prior to Drama Inc. And these guys that were regular customers owned this building down. Yes, yes people outside of Atlanta, there's a place called Cabbage Town. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a Cabbage Town in Toronto too. Um, and I knew these guys and uh, they had this building and we went down and I went down and looked at this space. It was a thousand square feet. And uh, I was like, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it, and took pictures. And then I think you guys came over like an hour later. Like, oh, was, I gotta say, please. You gotta Jason, I don't, I think you went and saw it once. Okay. And then we decided, no, we're not gonna take that financial leap. It's a little scary. And, and we, and then. And then I went and signed the lease behind their backs. I don't know. No, and then, oh. then, then it was like a couple of days later and we're having the conversation again. And we just, it was, it was just gonna be too difficult to really see our vision through in a space that we didn't have autonomy over, right. you know? And so somebody was using it as storage for like, was it Oakland Cemetery or something? They would oh, well, that was a different space. That was a different that was, space. That was the space um, behind Mescalitos in Grant Park that we looked at. Yeah. 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 Mm. But that place was like 4,000 a month. <laughs> so, so that's when you're like, wait, let's go back to this space. I know that we, so I, I think it was, we went back with you a second time and okay. saw it and thank God it, it wasn't gone. Um, yeah, so it was 900 square feet. Um, so it's like, it was the living room and the classroom and that was all we had. Uh, and 
the living room is the greeting area where everybody comes in. It's what we call it, the living room, because it, it, the lobby, it, it feels like a living room. It yeah. feels like a living room. It feels very homey in there. And the funny thing about the first year, my memories of the first few months are like, you, I knew the idea was brilliant and was going to work. I just, I had no doubts. I had no doubt that it was going to work. I just didn't know how, how it was going to work and how well it was going to work. Like yeah. the, the thing that Catherine and Scott, that everyone's talked about is community. None of us saw, you know, had the vision to see that we were going to build this incredible community. In the yeah. beginning, we were just hoping we could pay our rent um, yeah. and then maybe pay ourselves something, um, which for the first year, we <laughs> really didn't much. Um, so pay ourselves. We paid the rent. We've always yeah, we paid, paid the, the rent. rent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it was so remarkable. And Catherine talked about it uh, recently about one, after one of our very first on camera classes and we were leaving the building and like five of the students from the class were standing around out front of the building talking. And we were like, Oh, Oh, they're hanging out. They're yeah. getting to know each other. They're, they're building relationships. And I think it's a thing personally, it's a thing I'm proudest of, yeah, um, really. you know, and the people we've met and you look at someone like you, Kurt, and you know, you were in Peggy, uh, you know, you've, you've been involved in so many aspects of, of, of what we do and you've met so many other people that you've worked yeah. with and built relationships with. And I think I'm really proud of that. I, mm -hmm. I've said it before. I've regrettably, I'm not driven by uh, a quest for money. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, right. <laughs> I've just never been one of those people that's driven by money. I'm driven yeah. by, uh, I don't know, pray, you know, praise, whatever acknowledgement. Um, you know, I want to do good things and have people recognize that. And yeah. I think all four of us have succeeded in that. Now, Scott, on the other hand, he is a greedy money grubbing. <laughs> all he did pay for this, right? As a scoundrel driving in the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Kurt, when you came, when you came to Drum Inc., that I mean, that it's most definitely one of our high points. You know, I mean, we we everybody at Drum Inc., everyone who comes through the door, um, we treat as family. Uh, but when you came through the door, I think we all just kind of collectively made the decision to not let you go. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember in OC, I remember in OC one uh, that Jason and I teach. Yeah. And Kurt would get up and work, and Jason Jason and I would be like, "What is this guy doing in this class? Yeah. <laughs> he be in OC three. He doesn't belong yeah. in this class." Yeah. He but knew what he was doing, and he was, but he was real and humble and and yeah. kind and um and and worked for everything that he has and so and, well, good. Told, and he was good some, i've told some people afterwards like when i started um because i came down i also i came from cleveland i didn't really know i knew there was a lot of film and tv work going on down here in atlanta and i really hadn't done much of that at all up in ohio so i've taken some on-camera classes up in ohio and i i felt like i knew what i was doing but i also didn't want to walk into Atlanta and be like, I know everything. So I was like, well, I'm just going to start with the first class and see, um, and, and see what it's like. And then, you know, after the fact, I thought, you know, I probably didn't need to start with OC1, but at the same time, looking back at it, you know, some of my best friends here in Atlanta now I met in OC1 and I would not know them had I not, you know, started in that class. And I'm, so, uh, I'm, I'm super fortunate to have taken that class. Um, and then, and then after that, going on to, uh, Scott and Claire's class. I mean, I've taken classes with, with all four of you and the, um, the experience there has been amazing. It's, it's just been so cool seeing, um, what you all have built in, in the Atlanta community. I mean, the drama Inc, the drama Inc brand is like well known now in the industry down here in Atlanta. And I think for all the students that have come through your doors. I mean, when I first walked into the doors at Drama Inc., it's, you know, you, you see the Drama Inc. brand as a, as a professional acting classes there. But then the more time that you spend there, the brand means something different. Now, like you say, it means a community to, to everybody that, that, that stays there and takes more classes there. And as you go even further along, it starts to become, it starts to mean a family. And, and it really is that way. Um, and it's a credit to, to you guys for, for creating this space for us. And I, I mean, I, I'm sure I speak for 
uh, the people that I know, and then the thousands of people that I don't know that have that have come through your doors for uh, all kinds of different reasons um, that they probably feel the same way. And, and um, you know, thank you. Thank you guys for creating that space for us. It's, it's, uh, it's been really great. Thank you. And thank you, Kurt. Thank you. It means a lot. And we've, we have had over 4,000 people come through our doors in seven years. And wow, it's astonishing to look yeah. at those numbers. Well, um, babies. How many DI babies have there been now? Been oh, good, gosh. No. DI babies, DI weddings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, the Atlanta community, but, and you mentioned back in this original question that we've been talking on now for <laughs> 20 minutes, um, uh, how did we ever envision how large it would grow? Right. We had, you know, right before we had to shut the doors uh, for quarantine for, for COVID-19, um, we had a big annual uh, Elise Duquette, who is our goddess, our studio manager, um, organizes every year a big open house for us. And it's a mm -hmm. wonderful celebration. I mean, it's just awesome. Like we invite in a hundred students and they go through from class to class and they get to meet the majority of our of our teachers and our interns and like it's it's just, they just get this wonderful buffet of like everything drama inc has to offer just about um and that day well and the weekend the day before uh scott and i had taught uh, my my art of self-tape workshop in person and um for the whole week we had six six five or six from dallas how many six Six, six students fly in from Dallas for that wow. weekend and um, they they flew in specifically to take this workshop and then found and they wanted to stay for a few days and audit some classes yeah. and when they found out that um, day at drama Inc was the next day it would just was all there for for the taking for one weekend and um, they left Sunday night part of the DI family they took pictures they, I swear they had tears in their eyes. Mm -hmm. They were so uh, excited to, now don't get me wrong, they've got some fabulous training um, back in Texas. They train with a friend of ours. Um, um, Glenn Morshower. Yeah, Glenn M Morshower, um, who's absolutely lovely and loves Drama Inc. Mm -hmm. And um, he actually sent them to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they're they just wonderful human beings. And, and we've got stories like that all over the place. Scott and I teach script analysis scene study. In our last round, we had a student driving back and forth every week for a six week class from Ohio. Wow. Um, we've had students who, I mean, back in the day, remember the guys, um, uh, this woman would drive uh, her- Their last name down. is- uh, no. Yeah, their last name yeah. is Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and she would drive her three kids down for classes with us from Chattanooga. 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 Wow. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we've got, you know, they're, they're coming in uh, and now, and we've taught in Los Angeles and um, Jason Fort Lauderdale. Jason and Catherine taught down in Florida. Wow. You know, and so um, this is really, you know, where we're heading was the, the need for, for us to reach um, our audience. Uh, we needed more tools in mm -hmm. order to do that. And our All training right. and our training relates to any market, you know? Yeah. I mean, we have very Atlanta specific uh, tidbits and advice, but what we teach like, you know, what Scott's teaching as far as his digital presence and what Claire yeah. does with self tape, that it's universal. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I wanted to add one thing because you asked about the growth of Drama Inc. and we didn't say, um, so that thousand square feet, then we took yeah. another thousand square feet next door and there was a music studio. So we were able to use that as our taping room. Mm -hmm. Then we took another 1800 square feet and we built yeah. a stage. Um, and then we took another thousand square feet. So we have almost 5,000 square feet, wow. four full classrooms, taping room. We each have individual offices, which was, they were already built uh, in, in the big space. So that was really nice. Um, so yeah, the empire has grown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you guys started, it was just the four of you. So how many teachers do you have now? Well, we have 28 um, wow. staff, that includes interns mm -hmm. and tapers and Elise, uh, our wonderful studio manager, and um, yeah, and instructors. So we, when we have our Christmas party, we have there are 28 wow. invites go out. And uh, Amazing. Um, yeah, we're very proud of that too. I mean, yeah. how none of us imagined that we would be, uh, 
you know, help, not that people are necessarily making a living teaching at Drama Inc., but we're, but we're certainly helping, um, sure. you know, right. them to earn income and do what they love. And yeah. um, whether or not they're paying all their bills via Drama Inc., they indirectly are because they are learning just by being around that environment, by being around fellow storytellers, by, you know, everybody that's in there spending those hours taping those actors, they're learning, they're, they're, totally. they're sharpening their craft, they're helping others, you know, like, we would not exist if it weren't for the industry, if it weren't for the tax incentives in this market. It, it just, our business, Drama Inc. would not exist. And then if Drama Inc. didn't exist, you know, all, there would be no home for these actors that, that make their living, whether it be in the classroom teaching, in the taping room taping, or on set, right. practicing their craft, you know? Um, so many actors, through Drama Inc. are making their living 100% from their craft. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Something else important to note, every one of our teachers, every intern, every taper is a full-time working actor. Claire, Claire touched on it a little bit when, when she started talking about um, uh, some of the virtual offerings. So let's, let's, start, let's start getting into that now. Um, up until very recently, uh, the, the classes that, that, that you've offered at Drama Inc. Uh, have been great, but they've really been only available to the people that lived in Atlanta or close to Atlanta, or for the people that were willing to make really, really long drives to come to Atlanta and, and take those classes, right? But um, you've just launched something new and exciting to, to make your, your most popular classes and workshops available to, to really anybody, really anybody all over the world, right? So, so please tell us about that. Drama Inc. Online. Yeah, DI Online, baby. Yeah, yeah. Online. We have, uh, it's in the masterclass style, mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense. So, I mean, we're not calling ourselves masters. We're not saying we're teaching master classes. It's in that vein. Mm -hmm. We have uh, four classes. We have the Art of Self Tape, which, which is Claire's. D Digital Presence for the Actor, which is Scott. Get Ready for Set, which is Jason, which is everything that you need to know before you arrive on a set. And I have, um, I teach On Camera Plus, which is um, audition technique for the camera, as well as meditation techniques and memorizing and checklists, a little scene mm. study. It's, a, it's an amalgam of, of the breakdown and On Camera One, actually. Mm. Um, each class is 10 segments long. And you purchase, you can purchase one or you can purchase all four of them for a discounted price and you get them for a year. Great. So it's, it's amazing because you can go back to it over and over again yeah. because, and every time you watch one of these, these uh, courses, you'll learn something new. Right. No yeah. doubt. In all four of them. A lot. They and, come, they come know, the, art of, the art of self tape is, I mean, it's a no brainer for right now. Yeah. You know, part of my, my new class, uh, virtual class, is going to be people taping themselves at home and, yeah. and how, not how to do it, but they've got to make it look decent. But the art of self-tape, everyone should just take it. Everyone should learn yeah. how to be taping at home. Really quick, let me interrupt. So anybody watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put the link to uh, Drama Inc. online down in the description. So uh, definitely click that link to go to it and check it out. All right. Um, wanna hear, I want to hear more. So all, uh, all four of us teach these t uh, our own 10 part course and there are quizzes at the end of each part, each segment. Um, and there's some interactive stuff, right? I mean- We've got uh, supplemental material. Uh, supplemental yeah. material. Yeah. Um, so with, my, with mine, I, I have the, the mantra meditation that you can you have on your own. Right. Which I told you, Kat, like, just started to make me so relaxed. I'm like, oh, I think I think I need like a glass of wine, a bubble bath, and just a <laughs> Catherine's mantra and meditation tonight. Thank <laughs> you, Claire. Um, it's ex it's exciting. Drama Inc. Online, uh, you know, was a logical next step. Um, yeah. it took Claire and Elise uh, on a hike out in California. It took that to to make the idea spark because they came up with it. Um, and that's what happens when we go on vacation. <laughs> right. But I mean, it's like anything that we've done at Drama Inc., the four of us, whoever has the idea, it's just like, I don't know that 
you know, we agree 90% of the time. Like it's been like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Like, you know, and we, we all get on board and we all push the ball over the goal line. And that's mm-hmm. it's so amazing um, to have that relationship with these guys. Mm-hmm. And I think it is also part of what makes us stand apart is that you've got four, you know, working actors who um, all are out for the greater good, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, you know, I mean, yeah, we, we want to pay ourselves. We want, we are a for-profit business. We want right. to be able to make money and pay, pay all the bills and pay ourselves, but it's, it's never the driving force. It's never yeah. been the driving force. So, um, I yeah. just love, I'm very appreciative of the relationship with these guys and the ability to communicate, uh, uh and make things like drama Inc, you know, online, brilliant idea, Claire and Elise, they laid the groundwork and then all of us did our part and boom, there it was a, a year and almost a year and a half after their hike. Uh, and now there it is on, you can look at it right now, today. None, yeah. of, us, none of us could do what we have done by ourselves. None right. of us. Right. There's, right. there's just, I mean, you know, just, just talking about like peace of mind every single day, all four of us are actors first and foremost. And, we want to continue that we want to continue our path um and not have to like turn things down to to um, pay the bills or things like that you know and so uh coming together the four of us not only enabled us to do that but like jason said you know um it's really been kismet uh uh it it's we've always felt like we enhance one another. It, 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 there's not, there's not one thing that makes us feel like an, any part of this holds us back. You know, it's, it's just, it really is, like I said, kismet, you know, and we could well, the, the one thing that I thought was, uh, that really stood out to me, if anybody, when you, when you click on that link and, and go see what, um, what's available, it's so clear that you, you all have spent you spent a lot of time and energy on this. This wasn't just like a, all right, let's just get this up there. Um, and make it available for people. I mean, it's, 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 um, when you guys say like masterclass style, it also looks like uh, a masterclass offering, like what's, what's on their website. Um, and it's something that, that, you know, when Jason, when you say that, um, it's, it's not driven by the financial part of it, it's driven by, you know, wanting to help people. That's, that's very evident in it as well, because, you know, you guys didn't have to do this. You guys already had a full plate, right, on, in your teaching and in your, your, all of your acting careers. Um, and to, to carve out even more time in all of your days to make this happen and to make it happen in, in the way that uh, as professional as, as you were able to make it um, is a testament to, to how, how much you believe in um, what you have to offer and and also helping people out so that that's uh it's very clear when when you click on that website you'll you'll be able to see that yeah we Thank want end for sure and uh i'll tell you we sure would have loved to have december 26th 27th 28th 29th 30th yeah. 21st 2nd 3rd 4th all to ourselves in our home relaxing but oh no we were writing and rewriting and editing yeah. and getting ready to shoot and it was really stressful um but um, you know, I think we were all at our best. I mean, when we were on camera and, and I'm glad we went high end. Um, they look, they look gorgeous and they look amazing. Yeah. Here, here's the thing, Kurt, here's the, here's the dirty little secret. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've taught these classes and workshops in person a million times and we never do it from script, but because we wanted the, these drama ink online to be really clean and right. hit all our points, we had to actually write scripts to right. be loaded on the teleprompter right so all four of us had to sit down and write our courses yeah. out which is something we've never done before i mean we yeah. work from bullet points and stuff right but to mm-hmm. actually write the words mm-hmm. uh we were calling each other on december like 29th <laughs> like, uh, how many how many pages do you have um, yeah so. Scott, do you want to talk about that fun time when you offered to uh film these and edit them uh ourselves <laughs> in our taping room right Can yeah we did we <laughs> it was said- like all right these look freaking great yeah 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 and we no, did talk I, about I, that I, saying we'll just we'll do it ourselves scott can mm-hmm. edit we'll yeah. we'll shoot yeah it'll be fine so you can do it in a couple hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> and elise oh my gosh how much work she has put into helping us learn the whole platform in which the courses are provided and mm-hmm. um she she 
and taught herself how to write code. Not wow. extensively. She can't design a video game. Right. She can by now. I don't know. But she was <laughs> she really jumped in. Awesome. Into the deep end and, and uh, yeah. pulled it. She did. She was amazing. I would have I would have taken my head off of my body if I had to do what she did because it was the learning curve was was steep, but it was a challenge and she met it beautiful yeah, awesome. yeah. and and just a little plug if you are in the atlanta area and do need video services rcr video is who uh shot our hmm. videos for us and and, and edited are. did all the graphics and all the supplemental materials they, they did an amazing job and yeah um thank you claire good good sure. call on that rcr yeah. video yeah they're great awesome all right so one more time guys click that link down at the bottom to go check out uh drama inc online um that's uh that's basically all, all yeah that's basically all we had to talk about today yeah, you get a glass um, of wine Claire. it's only been what 10 minutes or so yeah. uh, <laughs> um but but yeah thank you thank you guys again uh first of all thank you for for joining me today and and talking to me um and uh secondly thank you for all you've done at drama inc and what you've done for the atlanta community and then third thanks for bringing um your classes online so that so that people uh, everywhere can can experience uh, what what you have taught me and and, and a lot of other people here in Atlanta. Um, so the, the last thing I have is any final nuggets of wisdom or inspiration that you want to share with with the people watching right now. No, no. no. All right. No. Nah. Bye. <laughs> I, I will say this: if you're even starting out, or if you're a seasoned veteran like Kurt or any of us. Just don't play the comparison game. Don't compare oh, yeah. your, where you're at in your career to anybody else ever. And don't place casting directors or directors or agents or producers above you. We are all on the same, we're on a level playing field. We all want the same thing. We all have the same end goal in mind. Yep. And I think, you know, what we say it in all of our On Camera One classes, just there, I say it uh, at the end of every OC1, there are two types of peoples. There are fountains and drains. And you want to surround yourself with the fountains. And, wow. and those drains, get those out of your life. Um, That's a great I think, one. I think I stole it from um, Pat Mitchell, who uh, did it in her, said it in her TED Talk. Um, and she I has, think you started saying that it must have been after I took OC1 with you guys, because I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Like, I really could have used that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, um, you know, it's just it's just about surrounding yourself with great people. And I think that's mm -hmm. what we manage to do. And that's what we encourage our students to do. And it's funny, if someone very toxic or negative comes into our into our sphere, they don't last long. They don't yeah. because we don't play into it. And uh, no one that we have in our community feeds on that kind of energy. So uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Um, and and uh, yeah, surround yourself with good people. That's awesome. I think that's more important now than ever, you know, and um, we're going through crazy times these days, you know, with the quarantine and everything. And that affects us. That affects all of us on a daily basis. We have ups, we have downs. Um, I think to remember to give ourselves, mm -hmm. not just other people, but to also give ourselves grace and to know that um, we're all going through a lot, but we have the benefit of knowing that we are storytellers. I've said it a couple times. I'll keep saying it. We are storytellers and we are collecting stories. And so let this, let this shape and let this affect your work as well. Let this yeah. deepen it and let this, um, be a, continue to be a journey that you're on, you know, yeah. and, um, because that's the best thing that we can do in our art is, is bring ourselves to it instead of trying to change ourselves for someone else, hmm. just bring ourselves to it and give ourselves grace to do that, especially now. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys uh, one more time. And then uh, I know all five of us are dog lovers. So I think it would be cool if we can end the, uh, the call with, I'm going to change the view back to uh, a gallery view. All right, we got all five dogs. All of them, hello. In the frame. Oh, you say hello to everybody? All right, let's do quick introductions. This is Tofu. Oh. Hi, Tofu. This is Jojo. Hi, Jojo. He's about this to be Bo. This Hi, is Bo. Gracie. Hi, Gracie. And this is Gabby, or Chewbacca. Hi, Gabby. All right. Thank you all again. Mwah. Thank, Thank you, Kurt.
Well, that's it for this video. It is my longest video yet, but it was packed with information that I hope you found useful. I want to thank Jason, Catherine, Claire, and Scott one more time for joining me. If you haven't already, please click that link to Drama Inc. online to check it out. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and until next time, keep practicing, keep learning, and I hope to see you on set one day.